What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Vision Board Podcast, another episode where we discuss everything from entrepreneurships to mindset and everything in between. We would like to bring people on that are in your community that's going through the same things that you know, you're know you trying to go through. So any new entrepreneurs out there that want to come in and just kind of like learn from this stuff, this is why we created it. So today we have our guest. I'm very, pretty excited for this one because <laughs> I met him what, once? Twice. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, twice, twice. I met him twice and I never really had like a full conversation with him. But uh, so I'm excited about this conversation, man. So this dude has been killing the recovery community and yeah. trauma treatment centers and all that. So without further ado, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Fausto, man, take it away, bro. Yeah, man. Well, what's up, guys? My name is Fausto Castellanos. Uh, I go by the, the Hope Dealer. Hope Dealer. Uh, I like to spread hope to the hopeless. And um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I was able to use my, my pain to build a, a six-figure uh, successful entrepreneur business. And that's kind of like my biggest thing is like using my traumatic moments in my life, my addiction, um, my mental health yeah, yeah. and embracing it. And what happened was it, it, I was able to turn it into a business, you know, and it's it's wild because I always say like sometimes it's well, actually from my experiences, your weaknesses become your business. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Because we're going to get into that. Um, because off off camera, right before we got yeah. on camera, he actually shared with me that he made how much? When so start, when he started his he started his treatment center business yeah. probably a, like a little under a year ago. That's yeah, September fifteenth. September fifteenth. <laughs> so tell everybody in your camera from September fifteenth up until now, how much money have you made? Yeah, I so I created a, a six figure business in what four months? Six figure business in four <laughs> months. He's, he's he's doing something else on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I do uh, I do lap dances. A thousand dollars a minute. There you go. I knew it was something. Thousand dollars a minute. Yeah, let me <laughs> get into that. <laughs> I actually have people on my team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so talk about how like what got you to the point where you wanted to even get into the whole uh, business of being in traumatic treatment centers and things yeah. like that. Yeah, so like uh, so my my story is uh, I was in active addiction for eleven years. So alcohol and coke were my main cup of tea, and I dabbled with just about everything else. And I had a lot of trauma. You know, I had a lot of sexual trauma. I had abandonment issues, social anxiety, codependency. And like, it was just something that I've always struggled with. And so yeah. I think a part of me always wanted to be like the superhero because I'd watch these TV shows, whether it's Dragon Ball Z or, you know, uh, Marvel things. I was like, man, these guys are all, they all struggle Yeah, yeah. and they have this cool story. So I always felt like that's what I wanted to be. So my whole life I chased bodybuilder, pro skateboarder, professional videographer, uh, DJ, bartender, I think I wanted to be a drummer at one point. <laughs> and that a <laughs> <laughs> you know, a uh, break dancer, graffiti artist. Like I always was chasing these things, but it never became anything because of my addiction got in right. the way. And so when I got sober in 2017, it just so happened that that part of me was still there. And yeah, yeah. so what happened was, you know, I worked as a bartender for a little bit. Then I worked in treatment, started from the bottom it was my first experience in rehab you know, 15 bucks an hour. And I started to recognize that oh, I'm pretty good at this. And so slowly, you know, get a little raise, different position. And then three years into it, I would always find myself getting like irritated. Like, I don't know if it's the job or is it me? You know what I mean? Is it right. me trying to run away and be in control? And so when I would switch from different treatment center, different treatment center, um, it kept on happening. I was like, what's going on? Like, is it me? And I got to a point where I was like, no, nah, I think I got what I needed the skills to learn, uh, yeah. the wisdom. And I said, okay, I'm going to try this out. And when I wanted to try it out, <laughs> I ended up getting pushed into having to try it out. And uh, I just went full force. I was like, all right, I'm going to reach out to people that maybe I can pick up some contracts. And because I was kind to people always, these people were like, yeah, we'll hire you. What do you want? Here you go. No questions asked. Like, So it was my kindness that allowed me to pick up these contracts so quickly. Yes. So when I say it happened in four months, I want people to know too, it was my whole life though of being kind to people that yeah. finally came in handy. Guys, that's a that's another nugget, man. So <laughs> and like when we do the when we do these podcasts, I always yeah. like to like give people nuggets. Yeah. He just dropped a couple <laughs> of them in that whole spiel, but like the whole kindness thing. Like I'd I'd say it all the time. If you're if you're a genuine person, mm -hmm. if you're actually a good person. Right doesn't necessarily matter what avenue you kind of go into people are going to vibe off of your you just being a good person right so 
if you're if you're somebody out there that's getting into the whole entrepreneur's state and whatever and you're trying to juggle of you know if if it's for you what you want to do blah 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 if you're just doing things for the right reasons and you just do it genuinely 100% it will work out for you you might not get to a point where you're making 100k in just 4 months no but you never that know doesn't happen to everybody right yeah it's it's, it's but, yeah. <laughs> but but it can it's true but it can if you just put yourself out there uh, we had a we had a guest last week where uh, Chris he said put yourself out there and just don't be scared. Yeah, that's that's, deep. that's, that's also it's a big thing, right? Because yeah. you just gotta because talk t- talk a little about because you was, you were sharing with me about some of the opportunities that you had with just being present and yeah. being there and just being open and talking to people. Yeah, you know one thing I've learned from my mentor is <clears throat> the best thing you can do is just show up, yes. right? Just show up. Yeah. Don't worry about what's gonna happen, how it's gonna look like, but just show up. Because I learned that you never know who somebody is going to play in your life one day that can give you that opportunity of a lifetime. Yes. And so like some of the opportunities that are don't make sense was like when I first got sober, I said, I want to be the best jump roper in the world. Well, I found the number one jump roper. I had his jump rope in my bag. And so I would visualize I'm going to meet him and shake his hand and say, your jump rope saved my life. A year later, he calls me, flies me out to DC, certifies me. I got really good at jump rope. I recognize that nobody can do what I can do besides this, my mentor, Buddy Lee. And I was like, wow. Then I got on, and the, because I saw it in my mind, and I believed it, and I kept on jumping rope every day. The number one channel of jump rope, um, official jump rope dudes, shout out, did a story on me. Okay, oh. that got me some people. Yeah. Rush Athletics in the UK, the number one jump rope company out there. Uh, Mayweather uses the ropes. They did a story on me. I was like, okay, when a jump rope meetup, okay. And then I was like, wow, this is really happening. Okay. Second thing was, I'm like, I want to life coach celebrities. I just feel like I'm going to do it. So I'd visualize how it would look like, like yeah. me behind, you know, the red carpet or For behind sure. like a concert and I'm like watching over them and stuff like that. And then I made a YouTube video, not expecting nothing out of it. And somebody wanted to meet me and it was a celebrity. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, like that just happened. Yeah. And same thing with like the treatment business that I started was I was like, man, I saw somebody doing it and I said, well, I'm pretty good at this. I feel like I can do it. I, I, I really do. But people tell me I'm really good at this. And so I just said, all right, let's try it. <laughs> like, I don't know how it's going to work, but yeah. I'm just going to do it and put myself out there. And then once you see, like, I believe once you try something and you see it work, it opens up your eyes to like, oh, that was pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was a lot bigger. It was a lot harder than I thought in my mind. And so by just putting myself out there, Um, it worked and opportunities because I would show up, I would be like, Oh, that's Kanye West's life coach right there. You know? Oh, wow. I didn't see that. Oh, wow. That's the guy from MTV, Jason Waller. I used to watch him. Now I'm in the same room as him. Um, Terry Bradshaw's daughter, the quarterback from the Dallas Cowboys. I was just with his, I met his daughter the other day because I just showed up to something, you know? And so it's like, it's wild when you just show up to things and you have an idea of what you want out of life. I believe that life will start showing you where it is. Yeah. And then you just take action. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that, that's a big thing. Cause I, you know, I, I used to read books back in the day and just, I read this book on Tyrese is the title of the book was called get out of your own way. Mm, that's good. And I feel like with the stuff that you were kind of saying is a lot of you kind of getting out of your own way, because I know a lot of people that, especially nowadays for when we're just coming out of a pandemic or kind of still in a pandemic or yeah. whatever. I don't even know what, what <laughs> what's going on now, right? <laughs> what, what, is, what is even going on? But, um, a lot of people have developed developed this new mentality. It's just like, oh, I don't want to go out. I don't want to meet people. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I just want to kind of stay home in my little bubble. Right. But if you do that, you're not gonna. You're not. Gonna, you get. You miss out on so many different opportunities. I mean, That's just true. listen to what he just said. Like he's literally putting himself <laughs> in these opportunities in these yeah. rooms with people that he's always you know looked up to or anything like that. That's that's power. Right. You know, some like it's sometimes it's just as simple as showing up. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if you guys have seen his jump roping videos. <laughs> the dude's a beast. Right? <laughs> jump was, rope ninja. <laughs> I was I was watching some of his videos and jump rope, and it's 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 pretty unreal. But uh, I'm not I'm not a jump roper like that. <laughs> not yet, not, not yet, guys. I but yeah, so possible. like so like th- throughout this whole podcast th- and his videos, what we like to do is like we like to give people nuggets and just kind of give people advice on, you know, th- no matter what kind of avenue they want to go in mm-hmm. as far as entrepreneurship and things right. like that. I want to I want to like invite people onto the show just to give people a perspective of like what it takes to mm. just take the leap of faith to go out there and do it and right. continue doing it for the foreseeable future. So kind of give some insight on you know just kind of like your thoughts about the whole entrepreneurship and you know the mm-hmm. mentality mm-hmm. of getting into it, what type of, you know, 
Yeah, what, what does that look like, right? Yeah, what does that look like to you? Like, g- give us give us your take on <laughs> the mindset that goes the behind mindset it, right? that goes behind everything. Yeah, I think well, you know, I think getting the hardest thing is getting something started, right? Right. So we have that big fear is I don't want to fail, um, and so I think that the mindset behind it is you, first thing I always tell people is find out what would you want to do for the rest of your life, and you would do it for free. Right. Because I think if you're passionate about what you're trying to build, then you'll be able to push through adversity. Right. So I would say find out the thing that you would do for free. Okay, Mm -hmm. cool. You got that. All right, cool. Now start educating yourself. Read different entrepreneurs books. Be around entrepreneurs. Ask some questions to kind of see like what it takes. Like because it's um, it's the hard thing is, is how do I stay in a positive mindset or I believe in what I am going to do is going to be successful long enough till it happens. And so it's really important. What I've learned is, is I found what I wanted. So I tell people, find what you want. Okay, cool. I want to help people. Yeah. Okay, that was the first. One. I didn't know how I was going to do. It. I just said, I'm going to. Okay. And then I was like, okay, how do I stay in a proper mindset for this? Well, I learned is to be very careful what you read, be careful what you listen to, and be very wise with who you surround yourself with, because it's 100%. contagious. You know, it's like uh, it's like the flu. Just because I'm healthy doesn't mean I'm going to catch it not catch it because I'm still around somebody. You can be the healthiest person ever. I still got the flu. That's yep. negativity. Same thing. 100%. So 100%. I always tell people like, make sure that listen to positive things, yeah. read positive books, surround yourself with positive people. Because if you're around that long enough, you're going to start believing in yourself a lot more. It just rubs off. On it you. just rubs off on you. Yeah. So it's having your, having a core group of people that believe in you uh, around you, finding out what you want to do. And the next thing is, is like, you really got to, what you want, you really got to give it value. Yes. It has to have value. Yes. Like it has to, because if it doesn't have value, you're going to give up. If it has value, you will figure it out. Yeah. Because a lot of people j- try to jump into the whole entrepreneurship. And I, I have this conversation over and over and over again. People just want to become an entrepreneur and be a business owner because of the money. Yeah. I don't want to make as much. And I get it. Like right, people, yeah. people of course. You, know, you have to have money in order to survive in this world, but if that's if your whole mentality and your mindset is going in and just thinking about the money, mm-hmm. it's gonna be so much harder because when stuff is not happening, you just, you, there's no means to keep going, yeah. right? You're just gonna you're just gonna throw in a towel and give up, and you're just not gonna have that drive to keep going. But if you're doing it mm-hmm. for the, the love of doing it, mm-hmm. who care, who cares about the money? Exactly. I'm just gonna do it because this is what I want to do. Type and, that, of thing. and that's so important too. I like that you, you touched on that because you're right. If you're doing it for the money, again, money's nice. But if you're doing it for the money, then the motivation behind it is it's it's gonna be stressful. Exactly. Because you're chasing a number. And then you might start doubting yourself because that number's not happening in the time that you want it. And then you're like, Oh, this is not gonna work. And it's like maybe maybe it was gonna work. It's just your approach is not allowing it to work. Yeah, change your approach, you change your results. And when you do it not for the money, then the energy that you give off is somebody who's humble who's kind, who's genuine. genuine. Yeah. And that's what's going to really bring in the income is that because people will want to work with you because of your personality. Yes. Now, now when I say I can do this, okay, cool. But if my personality is this genuine loving person, I'm like, man, you're a great person. Yeah, you're hired. Yeah, man, I, I was <laughs> the first episode that we did. We had Johnny on. Yeah, Johnny. And we were talking, we were kind of talking about the same thing. And he, I was, t- I was kind of telling him and we were kind of having the conversation you can like Johnny sells his shirts, right? Mm-hmm. It's like Johnny can come up to somebody and try to sell him a shirt and be like, Oh yeah, this is a shirt. You can try to try to sell the stitching and the fabric right. and all that other stuff. The quality of like, it. Like, yeah, I can go get the same type of shirt at Ralph's for half the price type of thing. Yeah. But if you have a story behind the logo and what you're doing and why mm-hmm. you're doing it, people are like, Oh damn, that's super dope. Yeah. Give me, give me three shirts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they want to buy into the person. Yes. It's not necessarily about the that's merchandise. Good. It's not about what you're providing. It's about right. why you're providing it and who you are as a person. That's so good. Yeah. Cause leadership talks about too. It's like people buy into the person before the vision. Yes. <laughs> so, 100%. Yeah, so that's what it is. Right. Like, um, that's why like, uh, America's got talent. They always show the underdog. That's the videos they show. Yeah. Cause that's the person, right? Yeah. And so it's the same thing with entrepreneurship too and doing things. It's like, if you want to add value to what you're doing, add value to yourself. Exactly. And, you know what I mean? And it's, it's so important because it really is true. That's why um, information doesn't change lives. It's emotions. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of uh, the whole Americans Got Talent yeah. thing, I hate watching those videos on YouTube. <laughs> I always find myself getting watery eyed. and get <laughs> The way they put the way they, they put the production oh, yeah. together the and they're music, telling people's backstory yeah. and it's just like, God damn it. I was not expecting to cry on this drive home. 
Um, but now I want, I want to kind of jump back. You said you know a couple minutes ago you were talking about passions and mm-hmm. things like that. I have this theory, right? So rock with me real quick. So I, I kind of come to believe that your a passion is, is, is one thing. It's like people used to always say, oh, my passion was fitness because I was doing it for so long. It's right. like, oh, you have a passion for fitness. And I used to say, because I didn't know any better, I used to say, yeah, my, my passion is fitness. I right. love fitness and I love doing what I'm doing. But since I've transitioned into video and photography and all that good stuff, I come to realize that fitness was never my passion. Mm. Videography isn't my passion. Taking photos is not my passion. My true passion is helping people. Mm. So when people are are talking about what their passion is, I'll always say dig a little deeper. If you're if you're somebody that's an actor, mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh, I have a passion for acting. It's like, ah, uh, dig a little deeper. Like, what is your actual passion? What is it like, you know, performing for people, making people laugh and things like that? Is it servicing other people? Right. There's always a, a bigger why behind the, the vehicle that drives your passion. Yeah, that's good. Type, type of thing, yeah. right? Because for the longest time when I was training for the last, when I was training for 10 years, I used to always think training, personal training, fitness was always mm-hmm. my passion, sports and fitness. And I come to realize, like, that was just a vehicle to kind of get me in a position to kind of put forth my real passion which was helping people mm. speak speak to that what do you, what do you think about yeah, that because well, that's you, always been my kind of theory and i just always get, yeah. one, get other people's perspective no that's good well yeah i i have this thing i call it the three p's right and it's pain passion purpose mm-hmm. and, and i believe uh i believe passion is what we do for for us and purpose is what we do for others and so a person can say one of my pains is um social anxiety okay that's your pain you struggle with yeah, yeah. my passion is to be able to heal my social anxiety because passion is trauma healed so I'm passionate about figuring out how to live with my social anxiety. Yeah. And now I want to help out other people with social anxiety and that's purpose. Mm-hmm. So I think when it comes down to finding your passion, usually it stems from like something that you do for you, but the underlying issue that's going to push it is like, but what are you doing it for? Yes. So I like what you said, that's right? Basically, like, yeah, I like training like and, and fitness and all that stuff, but it's really to help this individual out yeah. behind the videography. Yeah. I like doing this stuff, but the, the purpose behind it really is, is, is helping these individuals out. So there's so much more depth to it. It's not about you. Exactly. It's about others. And when it's about others, then there's more meaning to it. And so, yeah, yeah, it's really, I tell people like, um, that's why it's like, I like for me, like, yeah, I like jumping rope for myself. Yeah. I love doing it. I try, I thought I was going to turn a jump rope, but you know, my head jump rope business do that. And I was like, I don't really like this. This this is not what I want to do. I love helping people. And so, okay. My business, yeah, it's it's working with mental health facilities and substance abuse facilities and all that stuff. Yeah, cool, you make good money, it's fun. But I live for that person that gets it. Oh, oh man, yes. that light lights up in their eyes and they're so thankful and grateful. And you get that card or writing saying, thank you for being my my facilitator. Like, you really changed my life. Bro, some, in, some, in some cases, to me, like, that would be worth way more than any dollar amount you yeah. can give me. Because, like... That that feeling when you get when you get that feedback from somebody yeah. that was really needing something mm, from you and right. you save somebody's life, you help save somebody's life right. and things like that, like tugging on my heartstrings, yeah. like that that can like really yeah. fulfill me and to and to mm. go continue to do something great. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Whether I just like do a do a service for somebody, get paid, and then boom, it's over. Right. And you said that word, you feel fulfilled. That's what it, it's yes. that's fulfillment. We want fulfillment. Fulfillment lasts. Money is temporary, but fulfillment, it's like, man, yeah. I just got high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm buzzed. <laughs> yeah, because it's crazy because when you get that fulfillment from that from that one job that you did or that, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you're doing, it can catapult you to doing something more, right? So it's yeah. like I've done I've done shoots and jobs where I didn't get paid anything. Yeah. But the person comes back and was like, Oh my god, thank you so much for doing this for me. Mm. You literally brought my vision to life, blah, 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 whatever the case. And that little bit gave me enough fuel to be like, you know what, I, I, I can do this. You know what I'm That's saying? Fair. Now I'm going to go out and do more to help more people and, you know, this, this, that, and the third. But if I would have just got a dollar amount, yeah, I probably can, it, it probably give me a little bit of a high, you know, mm-hmm. big zeros in my bank account and right. things like that. But there's no fulfillment in just yeah. getting money. It's very it's, empty. It's, it's very empty. There's, right? a, there's a study that says, um, I was reading about it, and it says that, $75,000 is where happiness caps out. <laughs> Everything after that's going to be based on your life and what, how you live, that fulfillment. So, I like that. And it was cool because I was like, that's, that's, it's, it's a cool concept to know. So when you're making over 75 grand and you're like, man, I'm not happy, at least you can catch yourself. Wait, it's not making more money. Let me take a step back and look at my life. Exactly. What, what is it that I'm missing? Because it's not the money. It's, it's, it's finding fulfillment in your life. 100%. 100%. 
I, I'm going I'm to backtrack again. Because yeah. you said something. I don't even know how I remember this. But you said <laughs> something about kind of like... Um, to, now, now this left me again. Right. <laughs> it just makes this is up. this is live, guys. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't do this normally. But um, yeah, you you were saying something about like when you're when you're kind of becoming who you're becoming, you have to be careful about what you watch, be mm -hmm. careful about what you listen to, be careful right. about what you you know what you surround yourself right. with. There's a poster on my wall. I don't know if you guys can't see it, but it says, "Watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, okay. for they become your actions. Watch okay. your." actions for they become your habits watch your habits for they become your character watch your character for it becomes your destiny we become or we think what we think we become yeah, that's powerful and while you were saying that i kind of glanced up <laughs> on it i was like damn he's like fucking hitting that thing right <laughs> on the nail and that, that's something and the reason why i even bought that is because it's something that spoke to me because yeah. me growing up it, it was always about that like i we shared a stories you know before the camera started rolling but I grew up in poverty. I grew up mm -hmm. in in some adverse situations, surrounded by gang members, drug addicts, and things right. like that. And if I was in a, I was in a position where I, that's all I was accustomed to. Mm -hmm. So all I seen, that's all I heard, was just negativity surrounding mm -hmm. me. And my mom did something amazing, where she pulled me out of a school that I was going to with that was in that really really bad area and put me in like a predominantly white school mm -hmm. when I was in the second grade. And I like to and I, I like to say that kind of changed my whole direction in life because mm -hmm. that's where I kind of fell in love with sports and I kind of seen all these people kind of living life in a different way than what I'm accustomed to seeing. To gave me a perspective of like, there's a different way. That's there's a cool. different way yeah. we can do this, right? There's a mm -hmm. different way we can live life. There's a different, you know, going over to my friend's house when I was. You know, going over there and it's like everything worked, you know? <laughs> right? The, 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 <laughs> what growing, is this? growing up as a as a kid in the in the hood, you know, not everything worked. You, yeah. see, you walk into a place and you see that they got the, all the latest games and they got all this stuff, and it's just like you guys sit at the table and eat together. Like, yeah, what is you that? Know, you know what I mean? It's, like, it's, like, it's, it's dinner time. <laughs> yeah. like, what, is, what is that? Right? Like, I don't just go into the kitchen yeah. and grab my food whenever I want. <laughs> so that kind of opened my mind up into like new possibilities. That's you know cool. what I'm saying? So as I was going through school and making all these friends at this new school. I was just like, man, I want to I wanna live like you guys when I grow up. And I don't necessarily, and I love my parents. I love my, my family to death. But I felt like, you know, there's always a different way. And it just so happened that one of my good friends growing up, his dad was like a business owner. Hmm. And I used to go over there and kind of overhearing how he talked and how he kind of manipulated yeah. his ways and, and did stuff like that. And seeing all the things that he had, nice cars and things like right. that. And I'm just like, yo, maybe uh, working at Starbucks and Target isn't isn't the way, you know right. what I mean? So it's like that kind of opened my mind up to the whole business world and kind of like mm. doing things for myself and wanting to be better and it didn't it didn't necessarily gravitate right away because I didn't really know what I was I, I was I was like in 5th grade. I didn't know what I didn't know what it, what it really meant, but right. it was just one of those things where it kind of like when I think about it that really changed my perspective in life yeah so. this um uh, jay shetty says it, it was um we can only become what we expose ourselves to yes <laughs> yeah that that's exactly yeah. right yeah because if you're when, when you're when you're surrounded by people and my dad always taught me this mm. and um you know, i love him to death he said when you surround yourself always surround yourself by people that are doing better than you yeah because if you surround yourself with people that aren't doing as good as you are mm -hmm. they will keep you in that space but when you surround yourself with people that are on a couple levels higher than you, the longer you spend time with them, that stuff will just gravitate and just kind of like leech off of them and onto you and you become that just kind of like subconsciously right. type of thing. So, so yeah. Um, let's speak about, cause we got a couple more minutes. Let's speak a little bit about um, like education, mm. how important that is when you're kind of getting into this entrepreneur space, right. because there's, education is one of those things where it's like yeah you go to school you get good grades you go to college mm -hmm. and all that good stuff but that's not the education that i'm kind of talking about because i've always said this if we can if we can like redo this whole school system and replace teachers with like mentors yeah be, <laughs> we'll be so much yeah. better off just even have like a mentor class like one class our kids have to go to it's about life yeah like were, were you good were you a good student were you good in school? i'm a high school dropout dropped out of ninth grade the only reason why i got a high school diploma is my mom did all my homework and independent studies there, so, there, there you go so guys. mom's got two high school diplomas 
<laughs> so a high school dropout just made yeah. over 100k in four months. So I'm just, I'm just putting it out there, because a lot of people, man, especially when I was coming up, a lot of people used to say, "Oh, you need to go to school. You need to go to school. You need yeah, to go to school." Yeah, get the degree. Like, you gotta be a doctor, lawyer, this, this, and that. And I get it to a degree, but yeah. it's just like at the same time, the school system is only pretty much teaching you how to work a nine to five for the rest yeah. of your life. It's, right? it's stuck in that old concept of the civil times or something like that, how things used to be like, yeah, this used to be beneficial, right. but times are changing, but the school system ain't changing. Right, right. And, I, and there was this, there was kind of a stat where a while ago it was like, I think real estate is making the most millionaires and blah, 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 mm. blah, blah. And before that, it was kind of just working a corporate job, Fortune 500 company type yeah. of stuff. Fast forward to 2022, I think in the next three years i think youtube social media in general yeah. is going to make more millionaires than i believe it anything combined tiktok right it's, it's, it's insane yeah. like the amount of money that people are making just doing what they love to do yeah. on a daily basis so if you're if you're watching this man it doesn't <laughs> matter what it is that you do or what it is that you want to do find a way to do it do it for the right reasons yeah. and just Go in 100%. Yeah, right? you never know. I know somebody who's a rice cake person you on TikTok, mean? getting millions and millions of hits. I'm like, you just did a rice cake video? And they did it on accident. I just tried it out one day and I was like, wow, I got a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. Did another one and started growing. It's like, you never know. You never what know. What will work unless you try it. Man, I said this sometimes I watch some YouTube videos and, and all this other stuff and I'm just like, I'm looking at their view count and their like count. I'm like, this dude has 36 million views <laughs> of something. I'm like, what is, what is this video? <laughs> And they're making so much money off yeah. of this stuff, and it's just insane. So, in in, in the modern era, if you want to, if you, I keep saying it, but if you want to do something, get a camera, start with your iPhone, because we was talking yeah. about iPhones make amazing content nowadays. Turn the turn that camera around, hit the record button, and just start talking to people, sharing your passion, sharing what you love to do, and just just go out there and do it, man. That's right. So we always I always like to end these episodes with uh, some words of wisdom. Okay. I know you kind of gave a lot throughout <laughs> this whole episode, but look into your camera and just drop some nuggets to people that are just like, I want to we'll, start something. Needing some guidance. Yeah. Yeah. For you, for you guys that are watching, uh, my words of wisdom would be first thing is find out what your beliefs are. Um, you know, what do you believe about yourself and write it down because a lot of our beliefs are false and they're only created due to our upbringing and it's our beliefs that create our reality. So if you can find out what are my beliefs, are these true? And then now figure out what type of beliefs does, is it going to take for you to build that business, to, to, to follow your dreams, to live in purpose. And once you can change those beliefs, that's when you find the people who are going to help you believe in those. And once you're around that long enough, you're going to start seeing things happen. And when you start seeing these things happen in your life, each time it happens, you're going to attach to that moment and it's going to carry you to the next moment and to the next moment and to the next moment. And if you guys can do that, then anything is possible. Just remember that anything is possible in life. You know, I come from poverty. I was a drug addict, you know, a lot of insecurity, social anxiety, wasn't making a lot of money, tried lots of things that didn't work out, but I didn't give up. And once I figured out the formula to, you know, being around good people, educating yourself, um, believing in yourself, it, it, it changed my life. And so for you guys out there, just know that you can do anything if you put your mind to it, but you got to get those false beliefs out. Because if you don't, it doesn't matter how positive you try to think or what you try to do, uh, the doubt will kill your dreams. And so that's my words of wisdom is just know that anything, guys, I'm telling you, anything is possible. And uh, don't ever let someone say that you can't do it because 99% of people want to see you fail. And mm, so that part doesn't mean what they say is facts, just opinions. Yes. And that's, I just want to piggyback on that <laughs> last thing that you just said. A lot, a lot of people do want to see you fail, yeah. but there's also a ton of people in your circle that want to see you succeed. Yeah. So when you're starting something, shift all your energy to the people that want to see you actually succeed in life and not just trying to outdo your haters or trying to like, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what the kids are saying these days, but <laughs> It's, it's not always about trying to prove people wrong. Mm. You know, shift your mindset, prove people right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So take that. He dropped, he dropped a lot of nuggets, man. <laughs> I was sitting here like, damn, 
Like he's, he's getting me and <laughs> to go and do somewhere. I was like, That's I'm not right. doing enough. He's, he's right. He's, he's, <laughs> oh no, guys, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I need I need to do more. Yeah, yeah. Right. And That's a big thing too is self care. That's a big one. Uh, yeah, speak on that real quick. Yeah, like, got a few more minutes. yeah, self care is super important. So like the biggest thing I've learned is entrepreneurship. We promote a lot of you got to go go go. You got to get up at three in the morning. You got to do more than others. What I've learned is the more you relax, the more you get out of life. Because in relaxation, you create the feeling that you're chasing without having to chase it. And so if you create those feelings in relaxing more, all of a sudden it helps you slow down in life. Because if you try to force it, you'll break it. And if you go too hard, you're gonna run into burnout. And burnout, if you're not aware, will create this delusion of, this is not what I wanna do anymore. Eh, this is not gonna work out. I knew I couldn't do it, but really all it is is you're burnt out. And when you're burnt yeah. out, everything feels like crap yeah. and so slowing down is the key to success and it's um it's something i always tell people and you'll run you'll realize how hard it is to slow down it's very difficult i gotta tat it on my fingers because i need to slow down <laughs> i need to remind myself to slow down every day um because it's it's going to be the key to a lot of your success that's powerful man i mean thank you for sharing that because i it's it's something that i think a lot of people know but it's something that we need to hear yeah. on a con. And actually practice basis. it, right? <laughs> practice it in your mind over and over again. Because man, like like he said, if you if you start going and you're you're doing your thing and you're just going, 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 and you get to a point where you start to burn out and you don't have a big enough why to keep yourself going, mm -hmm. that can be the, some of the most humbling stuff possible. Because. Right. You just feel like you just wasted the last, you know, like I said, if you start a business and you, you add it for a year, year and a half, and you get to a point where you're burnt out already. And now you just like, damn, you're looking back at your life. It's like, I just wasted a year and a half and I don't even want to do this anymore. But it's not, like you said, it's yeah. not that you don't want to do it anymore. You just don't have the balance in your life yeah. to kind of like separate work from right. self-care. Yeah. So. Yeah, because there was like a story of like a, like a metaphor for it was like these people were digging for gold yeah, and they were literally like this close to getting the gold the and they're like, oh, we're tired, we're burnt out and they the gave story. up and then somebody came later on and found it. Mm. It's the same thing with uh, entrepreneurship. That's why I slow down because you're this close yeah, man. to getting what you want to get out of it's it. It's the rabbit and the tortoise. There's so many stories out there <laughs> yeah. about this stuff, man. You guys just got to go out there and like research it, look it up. Yeah. Every Almost every story I feel like is about in some way form or fashion is about slowing down and just kind of like enjoying the fruits of your labor a little yeah. bit getting you to your self-care find something that you like doing outside of work yeah and you know have some have some fun with it that's the biggest yeah. thing have fun have with fun. whatever you decide to do because you know it's a it's 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 it's, it's a fun thing it's it, yeah. the journey the journey is bigger than the the prize at the end of the rainbow yeah right so have fun with it and uh, yeah, just man, whatever you decide to do, just do it 100% and just learn as you go. That's right. So thank you guys for tuning into this episode with my boy Fosto. Fosto, look into your camera, tell them where they can find you, social media sites, all that good stuff. Yeah, all right, guys. So if you guys want to find me and hear what I got to say, I can, <laughs> um, <laughs> Hope Dealer Fausto is my Instagram, Sober Fausto is my YouTube channel. I do a lot of motivational, inspirational videos. I help people with addiction, trauma, dysfunction, mindset, and it's just a, it's just a good place to to find some hope. And um, you know, it's like if you want to reach out, send me a DM. I'll do my best to get back. Um, if you guys are in Orange County area, show up to the Magic House 6 p.m. every Sunday. We have events. If you meet me in person, be ready because I love to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's awesome, and thank you so much for coming through. And guys, the way, like I, I bring people onto this podcast that are just like everybody that's watching. These people are you. You can actually reach out to them. So hit him up in his DMs. I know he's a busy dude sometimes, so he <laughs> might take a little while to get to you. Like I got ADHD, so I may forget. <laughs> but but he's definitely somebody that you can just reach out to and just get some advice on, you know, business or yeah. trauma or you know, yeah. sobriety and every and everything in between, yeah. man. So take advantage of the people that I bring on. Reach out to these people, go follow them, hit them up, see what he's about. And uh, yeah, man, so Fosto, man, appreciate, appreciate you coming you, on. This has, been a, this has been an amazing experience because this is somebody that I didn't know until <laughs> today. So I learned a lot <laughs> myself. So it's awesome. So yeah, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys in the next video. So make sure you guys like, subscribe if you like what we're doing here. And uh, catch you guys in the next one. Deuces. I've been all in my bag. You been all in my business. You 
be all in your feelings. Uh, I've been all in them trenches. Uh, I've been all in my bag.